Hi, thank you. Um, I'd like to say, you know, I think this meeting is largely a sham and I'm here to support the public and their outcry for how upset we all are about this order to gentrify the 24th Street Mission neighborhood. Uh, the reason people, you know, people always ask me, why are these trees coming down? And it's a great question. Uh, it has everything to do with money. It has everything to do with liability. But mostly it has to do with removing a barrier to create more, uh, more construction projects to, to wipe off the face of this neighborhood, people of color and people that have lived in this neighborhood for decades. Uh, that is what is being routinely done around this city through illegal tree removals. And I believe this meeting is a sham, as I just mentioned in public comment. The vice president here is actually personal friends with the defendant who is representing public works. And they're gonna sit here and they're gonna tell you all that they're listening to your concerns, you know, that darts are being thrown and arrows are being thrown and they're very vulnerable. And it's not true, right? No one's throwing any darts here. We're just expressing our concern and our, our anger, frankly, at the disrespect and the lack of care for the public trust which is our public trees. Uh, most of the other appellants are gonna talk about uh, conciliatory measures they've been making with the defendant. My heart goes out to them. I know they're working very hard and doing very good work. I have attended some of those meetings and found them to be somewhat, uh, the, the sort of uh, negotiation meetings, I found them to be somewhat fruitless. And I know this department has not held their word ever, almost ever. They consistently lie to the public and, and abuse their role as public officials. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. So first of all, uh, in the minute uh, notes from uh, July 1st, we had uh, four or five people spoke up about illegal tree removals by Public Works in the Hayes Street and Hayes Valley area. That's in the, that was mentioned at the last meeting at Board of Appeals. Uh, they also illegally removed trees at, um, at uh, Quint Street, which was part of my appeal. And this Board of Appeals granted those appeals anyway. Um, in fact, uh, not, the, not the one for Hayes Valley hasn't come up yet, but they've been granting appeals for illegal removals anyway. So even when the trees are cut down during this process, this board still passes it, still says, yeah, you get a pass. Uh, what that does is encourages Department of Public Works to illegally keep cutting down trees, not even have to bother with the appeals process. It's just a rubber stamp for them. Um, and so let me explain why I don't think that conciliatory measures are the way to go. So first off, as I mentioned previously, the person that gave the order for these tree removals, Mohammed Nuru, who was the head of this department, was arrested by the FBI on charges of fraud and corruption. And according to the examiner, the complaint alleges corruption pouring into San Francisco from around the world. And uh, it alleges corruption um, and kickbacks and side deals by one of San Francisco's highest ranking public employees. Well, Mohammed Nuru, why is he doing corruption? If we go over here to Transparent California's website, Mohammed Nuru makes $323,000 a year. I don't see why he needs more kickbacks. Uh, and, you know, this department cries broke all the time, says they can't take care of our trees. Well, let's see how much Chris Buck makes. Chris Buck makes $168,000 a year. Kevin Jensen, the disability coordinator, who's been ignoring my email requests going back to March, even after this board asked on July 1st, if he responded to me, he makes $218,000 a year. Well, when you put that all together and you look at what replacement trees cost and what the watering cost is, I mean, you're talking about a person's salary to cover the proper maintenance of these trees. Uh, Department of Public Works is going to argue that an arborist made a review and recommended removal of these trees, a separate arborist. That's true. Um, but what you'll find in the arborist report is that management of the disease that it has, which is very common for some of these trees, is largely focused on prevention. Um, there's underlying stress factors. And these trees are clearly stressed because they're not being taken care of. I did a public records request that was very hard to get uh, through for the, the watering of trees along the street. And there's only 10 trees that are being watered. This is the list of them here. None of them are the ficus. Turns out DPW does not actually water any public trees, usually after three years. They won't give it a drop of water. So when these trees came under the care of Public Works, they looked like this, green, healthy, property owners had been taking care of them. Uh, when they came under the, the, the control of Public Works in 2017 through the Proposition E, 
they started to decline clearly from not being watered and not being pruned and not being properly cared for. And as this appeal has worn on over the months, the uh, Department of Public Works just gets to say, well, the trees are in bad health. We have to take them down. Um, in the Arborist Reports by Christopher Campbell, he says, many of these trees are simply suffering from lack of maintenance. Um, he goes into how the pruning has been done incorrectly. And how can we approve permits and approve destruction of trees when this department isn't even trying? Um, if you go back to uh, January of uh, 2019, um, here's something Christopher Buck said that I think is uh, very telling. It's a drag. Um, it's probably the reason for my voice being hoarse, but you know, to hear from Zach four years later, like, hey, at Appleton Emission, we've got four That's trees you haven't replanted. You know, four years is a really long time to wait for trees to be replanted. So even when this department says, yeah, we'll replace with a one-to-one -one ratio, we'll do this, we'll do that, they lie. They don't do it. Years and years go by. And a new tree, a new maple tree is not a replacement for a 50-year-old ficus tree. It's not the same thing. Uh, additionally, a huge part of my complaint is the inaccessibility uh, for people with disabilities and seniors to read these notices that were put on these trees. I didn't even find out about the original public hearing because the notice period had already lapsed in the time that I was able to get outside in my wheelchair. Here's a video I'd like to share with you showing that. 24th Street here, having a lovely Sunday, summer day here. And it gets kind of ruined by something like this. 30 seconds. This is a city notice in very small print, which I can't even get closer to reach with my wheelchair. That's saying that they're gonna cut down this tree. So seniors and people with disabilities did not have equal access to, these, to the original appeal that took place. I didn't even get a chance to attend it. I didn't get a chance to attend the community meetings. Uh, since I filed this appeal many months later, uh, Department of Public Works- Next time. Thank you, Mr. Carnazes. We will now hear from Joshua Clip. Mr. 